Friday, October 10th, 1997, and this is our weekly broadcast of Cougar TV. Today's show features the Principal's Corner, the Arts Report, and a message about the Giants Safeway campaign. The SGA and Sports Reports will update school events. But first, please stand for the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Donate your time while supporting a good cause. Go to the third annual Hospice Bullathon on Saturday, October 25th at 1.30 p.m. at Bull America in Gaithersburg. For more information, talk to Stephanie Moore or Chris Thomas. Mr. Shea is here this morning with the Principal's Corner. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to uh, greet you on a Friday morning. I hope everybody is doing well. I want to congratulate the over 800 students who are involved in one or more sports clubs or activities. It's just an outstanding effort students have been demonstrating from being so involved in school. To those students who will be receiving today or possibly tomorrow an interim report, please get help. If you need help from a teacher, make sure you go see that teacher after school, before school, or at lunch. It's real important that you learn now what it is you're not doing well enough with your teacher and that you take time to go see that teacher. The um, commended students who I had the opportunity to bring to you earlier this year, Molly McCollum and um, Katie Miller and Chantel Fiebig, they have done an outstanding job and I recognize them personally here on Cougar TV. This morning I'd just like to read a short list to you of those students, 17 students, who were also uh, recognized and commended. Um, Molly. Katie and Chantel, they'll march forward and possibly be considered for the semifinalists as a semifinalist for the next round, but we're real proud of these students. So congratulations to Jessica Tro Trojak, Jonathan Talbert, Jayan Sam, Sara Sam, Dimitri Ryaboy, Pradistra Pill, Lindsay O'Neill, Kimberly Novick, Aaron Nichols, Brian Martin, Sergey Corin, Kostya Karipin, David Delinsky, Michael Ciotto, and Richard Barton. Congratulations to those students, and that's it from Cougar's Corner. Students need community service hours can earn them by taking part in the cleanup of Little Seneca 10 Mile Creek. The date is October 25th from 8 o'clock a.m. to noon. Kingsview Middle School needs students to help with the community service day on Saturday, October 25th. See Coach Duty in Portable 3A during lunch for more information about both of these activities. The Giant Safeway Receipts program is well underway. The next message explains how you can support it. 
Hi, Cougars. I'd like to have you meet Bob. Hello. My name is Bob. I am a Power Mac 5200. I am two years old. I live in the art department here at Queen's Orchard High School. How did I get here? Well, let me tell you. I am here because of you. A few years ago, students just like yourselves brought in giant and Safeway receipts. This year, we hope to gain even much more needed computer equipment for the school. Here's how you can help. Bring your giant and Safeway receipts from home. Ask your friends, relatives, and neighbors for their receipts. Turn the receipts into your first period teachers. There will be prizes given away each month to the classes and first period teachers that turn in large accumulations of receipts. Thank you for listening to my goodbye for now. The following colleges and universities will have a representative in the Career Center next week. Longwood College in Virginia, Lehigh, Hood, Haverford, Greensboro, Western Maryland, Firm, Montgomery College, St. Mary's of Maryland, Wilson College in Pennsylvania, Stetson and Lynn University in Florida, and the University of Pittsburgh. Remember that you need to get a pass the day before the visit. The calendar for the month of October is available in the Career Center and on the Quince Orchard homepage. The Arts Report is next with Christine McCammon and Phil Mervis. Hello Cougars, it's time for the Arts Report. I'm Christine McCammon. And I'm Phil Mervis. Christine and I have worked together backstage at past drawing productions. Last year you stage managed for me and my girl. Tell us what role you are filling this fall in Inherit the Wind. Phil, as you know, the fall play is a courtroom drama about one of the most fascinating trials in all of American history. And for a change, I get to be on stage. My character is Mrs. Sarah Brady. Every day after school, cast and crew has been hard at work on the fall production of Inherit the Wind. Inherit the Wind is an intense courtroom drama where the freedom of every American is on trial. The show will be performed on November 6th, 8th, 14th, and 15th. It's still not too late to participate in the show. Stage crew meets after school at 3.30 on stage. Come join us. It's going to be a great show. Drama club members, there's an important meeting at lunch on Tuesday in room 239. We will be discussing field trips, Maryland Theater Festival, musical auditions, and our trip to England. Please bring with you any email addresses of theater alumni that you have. Also going on are some great workshops for playwrights and for seniors who will be auditioning for performing arts programs and scholarships this year. Come to the meeting Tuesday and find out about these opportunities. Remember to check the call board next to the elevator on the first floor for drama news. Also don't forget to find us on the internet at www.arrels.com slash McCary slash QO Theater. On October 16th, the music department is presenting its fall concert at 7.30. Performing will be chambers, madrigals, girls chorus, show choir, orchestra, concert band, percussion ensemble, and jazz band. All the groups sound fantastic this year. Everyone should come out for a great show. The music department is right in the middle of its cheesecake, coffee, and tea sale. Many kinds of cheesecake are available, including chocolate, strawberry, and cookies and cream. The teas and coffees come four to a pack. Starting Monday, there will be a table in the main hall at lunch where you can place your orders. On October 18th, our magnificent marching band will be in a parade competition in Martinsburg, West Virginia. They also have a field competition in Hagerstown, Maryland. The Photo Club meets every Tuesday at 2.15 after school and is looking for new members to come join. There is a field trip coming up to Corcoran Museum. See Aaron Deegan for details. All new and old members of Tri-M, dues are due on Monday, October 13th. Also, all new members of Tri-M, you are reminded that the music you will perform at inductions should be turned in to a music teacher by Monday the 13th. All students going on the music department's trip to the Bahamas must bring in their de first deposit by October 15th. The deposit is $50 if you are going by bus and $100 if you are going by plane. That's it for the Arts Report. Have a nice day. Thank you, guys. The attendance office is working hard to streamline procedures and get green slips out quickly. But your cooperation is needed to make that work. The note given to the attendance secretary following an absence must include seven pieces of information. They are, one, the student's full name, two, their grade level, three, date or dates of absence, four, their reason for absence, 
Five, parent or guardian signature. At age of majority, students may sign their own notes. Six, parent or guardian's daytime phone number. And seven, first period teacher's name. Those seven pieces of information are needed in each and every absence note turned in the attendance office. For students whose notes are complete, green slips will be given out to their first period teachers. October will kick off a major fundraising effort by the Quince Orchard Booster Club. The Heisman Fine Arts Gallery will bring more than 200 pieces of framed art, mainly by nationally and internationally known artists, for show and auction. Quince Orchard students will also be represented in this show. 75% of all ticket and advertising revenue will be directed to those organizations participating. The potential for funds is unlimited. Call the Booster Hotline at 301-840-1580 for more information. Additional details will follow in the Cougar Crier, the Prowler, and on Cougar TV. Also, we got some announcements. All officers of the African American Club are to meet in Miss Hardy's room at the beginning of lunch. Please try not to be late. Bring your lunch it is very mandatory. All image makers are going on the field trip. Please attend a brief meeting to discuss field trip and much more in room 124 today. Thank you. Students interested in working as a camp counselor for elementary and middle schools should see Ms. Mills in the main office for an application form. Kingsview Middle School is next week, so please hurry if you're interested. The SGA report is next with Kaylee Hamilton and Alan Jung. Good morning, Cougars. I'm Kaylee Hamilton. And I'm Alan Jung. And this is your weekly SGA report. Gee, Kaylee, I'm still recovering from homecoming. It still rings around my head. Yeah, the whole thing ran smoothly. But now to a less entertaining note. The October blood drive is in three weeks. Blood banks in the Washington area are always having shortages of blood, and they need your support. Did you know that your one donation can help eight, up to eight people? Sure did. But did you know that giving blood is good for your health, since your body creates fresh new blood cells to replace the dead ones? Not only that, but guys, you can benefit further by, try, by helping to reduce chances of heart and circulatory problems. I must say, I didn't know all that. But I do know that the process of donating blood only takes about half an hour, and most of that's for paperwork. Unfortunately, only students who are at least 17 years old and who weigh over 110 pounds can donate blood. And those under 18 need a parent or guardian signature prior to donating. I hope all you Cougars who are eligible to donate do so. I know I am. Hey, when is the October blood drive? I know they didn't call it the October blood drive for no reason, but when is it exactly? The blood drive is on October 28th, all day during school. Teachers may also donate if they wish. Sign-ups will be held soon, so keep listening to the announcements for more information. Speaking of helping people, that reminds me of the canned food drive. Oh yeah, that's coming up soon, isn't it? Yep, for those of you that don't know, the canned food drive is a yearly event where, the, where we collect canned food for local food banks. It's right before the holidays, and it's a great way to help those less fortunate celebrate the holidays. Start collecting your cans at home. We'll have more details on this available soon. Please stay tuned. And gee, Kaylee, December reminds me of something else, but I just can't remember what. Is it Christmas? No, not Christmas. Nixon's birthday? No, that's January. It's something where people lip sync to their favorite music. I just can't remember what it's called. Oh, you mean putting on the hits. Yeah, that's it. The annual lip syncing contest where friends get together and sing and dance to their favorite songs. If you're thinking of entering an act, start your acts ready now. December is just a hop, skip, and a bounce away. And let's be honest, the SGA is tired of always having the best act. We need some competitions to start working now. And a reminder to possible participants, to participate in any SGA activity, you must be eligible for extracurricular activities. Finally, the SGA had a general assembly yesterday. Attention second period teachers. Uh, please allow your reps to present their reports today from the assembly. Also sophomores, your class is doing a clothes drive and powder puff. If you have any questions, talk to any of your class officers. Thank you. That's all for this week, Cougars. Due to circumstances beyond our control, there will be no word of the day. But just keep up in school and get working on those college application seniors. Camcorder testing and training are scheduled on Monday, October 13th, and Wednesday, October 15th, in the TV studio at 10.55 a.m. Students who plan to use a camcorder to videotape a game, club, or school activity must complete the training and pass the competency, competency test before they can borrow this equipment. Coaches and club sponsors should have at least one member of their group complete the training. Report immediately. Only six students are admitted to the training session. The next camcorder training is scheduled for Monday, October 27th. Do not bring food in the TV studio, so you should eat lunch before reporting to this training. The sports report is next with Steve Moore, Steve Moskowitz, and Andy Clark. Good morning, you all sports fans. I'm Steve Moore. I'm Steve Moskowitz. No, no, I'm Steve Moskowitz. I'm Andy Clark. Uh, we'd like to start off by thanking no one. Um, this is our second week anniversary as <laughs> Cougar Sports Reporters. 
Um, I know what you're thinking right now. You know, you're can't wait for us to thank Brian Lee and Biff Wiggles, but we're not going to thank Brian Lee or Biff Wiggles today. It's just, it's just getting old. However, we would like to wish a happy birthday to Steve Moskowitz over there, Jackie Gilder, and Blair Jacobs. So happy birthday and job well done to that crew. A um, couple announcements first. Uh, field hockey, JV, and varsity dismissed at 1 o'clock on Monday for an away game at Einstein. Um, in the cafeteria, there's a great sports giveaway, so come and register and you can win some cool prizes. Uh, results posted on Friday, October 17th, so go get an entry. The Quincy Orchard tennis team lost a tough match against the uh, county's number one team, Whitman, yesterday, 1-6. Jen Garvey had no trouble eliminating her opponent, 6-0, 6-0. The team won its match against Watkins Mill on Tuesday. The winning singles players were Jen Garvey, Rajvi Mehta, Olga Levitsky. Winning doubles teams were Aisha Amadawi and Lisa Raposa, Laura Han and Laisa Souza, Lisa Killen and Rina Agarwal. Congratulations. Golf team had district tournament last Tuesday. Um, unfortunately, the team didn't make it to the states as a whole, but uh, superstar captain junior J.D. Lubinetsky did. Uh, we're all behind you, J.D. Good luck. Varsity Field Hockey. The Varsity Field Hockey team is looking forward to a win Monday at Einstein. This week, the Lady Cougars held both undefeated teams, Whitman and Churchill, to a 0-0 at the half. But they ended up losing both games despite terrific efforts by the entire team. Um, their record stands at 4-5. and five. They enter the final week and a half of play. Um, we're proud of the Lady Cougars and wish them luck with the last three games of regular season. Congratulations to the JV field hockey team for their great comeback this week after losing their game Monday 1-0 to Whitman. Wednesday, the JV defeated Rockville 2-0, and yesterday they came back to beat Churchill 3-2 on a last-minute goal by Danielle De Buchanan. Counterlink Emily Lichvar scored the, the first goal on a beautiful rush, and the goalies at uh, Glory Lee finished the first half scoring for the Lady Cougars against Rockville. The team's record is now 5-4-1 as they play their final game of the season Monday against Einstein away. We're proud of you Cougars and wish you luck in your season finale. We're all behind you. The JV football team smashed Springbrook 27-8 yesterday. The 4-2 team will play Sherwood next Thursday. They played their hearts out. Uh, speaking of playing their hearts out, last night the Tubas <coughs> As the effort they put in last night it was just sensational. I just, it was breathtaking, the performance Beautiful. last night. If you missed it, I'm, I feel sorry for you and I pity your soul. It was just incredible. It was just job well done for the tubas. Tubas, I shed a tear, man. I can't tell you how great it was. Uh, the cross country team had an easy week this week as it prepares for the divisional championships on Tuesday against Churchill and Whitman. Next week, the team goes to New York for the East Coast Championships at famed Van Cortlandt Park. Congrats to the Puffer ninth grader, Chris Sloan, who was voted as the male runner of the week for his impressive running for the week before. Sloan has worked so hard that he has moved into the varsity after, the, after last week's races. Claudine Hull was voted girl runner of the week with her impressive running as she moved to within a few seconds of her team's top girl runner who placed in the top 30 at William & Mary Invitational with over 200 runners racing. A reminder to the team that uh, great sheets are due on practice, uh, practice today. Um, get one from Mr. Link if you don't have yours. The JV soccer team easily blew past Seneca Valley yesterday, 5-0, to up their season record to 9-0. Good luck with the rest of this, the season. Go get them. Varsity soccer was, uh, was started the week uh, by beating divisional opponent Blair. The score was 1-1, oh, I guess by tying, I guess. Hmm. Uh, QO's goal was scored by Landon Padgett with the assist from Ian Morell. Last night, the Cougars beat Seneca by the score of 3-1, bringing the record of 5-2-3. Goals were scored by Landon Padgett, Jason Brenner, and Danny Wildeman. Next home game is Monday at 7. JV plays at 5 against Poolsville. Uh, here's a clip from our sensational basketball team. Come on, come on. Come on, Max Woo! Come on Max yeah! Max yeah! Oh, my God. Come on. That was awesome. We're done. Okay, that's the show for this week, guys. Stay tuned after the credits for the calendar. I want to just give a special thank you to Biff Wiggles, Annie Gav, and Lil Susie for making this a great show. The word of the day is salubrious. Conductive to good health and mind. Good for learning. That's the show for this week. Thanks a lot.